Welcome back to Software Inc, everybody. I hope you're having a good one because I am excited to be back. And I have a bit of a confession to make, and it's specifically about the helipad that you can see right there on top of our console factory. Long story short, it's very tempting to build a massive structure and put a whole bunch of helipads on top of it. I think it would look ridiculous and hilarious, but I'm not gonna do that at least not yet, because I don't think we need to. To be completely honest, that's just my chaotic nature trying to take over a little bit. I just think it'd be really funny to see like 50 helicopters coming down to lift all these boxes, and then you just imagine them flying to all these different places across the country. I've just realized the country, I say the country, but I don't, I almost said something else there. I probably should have finished saying the word country the first time around. <laughs> I don't know where nerd was. It's got to be. I mean, it's the United States, right? We're based in the United States. We're working in dollars. We've got to be. So just all these helicopters flying across America, just dropping consoles into stores. That'd be kind of hilarious. Anyway, hello. <laughs> Welcome back. My chaotic nature aside, we're with Nerdrosoft as we usually are. We are building up to the release of Horse Simulator 5 this coming January, which is very, very exciting. And of course, we are working on Amplitude Studio 2, which is due for September 2020. We have Vertex Studio 2 due for June 2019. We have Vector Studio 2 in May of 2018. We have Captain Motor Stamp 5 for November 2017. And we are working on an operating system. We're working on Doors, which is currently slated for February 2022. Long story short, we are building up to hopefully have super regular releases with Nerdrosoft. And that's going to be starting with Horse Simulator 5 in January of 2014. So let's figure out how that's going to do for us. Also, I sincerely hope the print job for it has finished. Although before we even get there, let's go ahead and throw another update out for the Enphone 3. There's a lot of bugs to get fixed on this thing. It is exclusively going to be the updates team this time though because we aren't going to be upgrading any of the tech. So we'll go ahead and get them working on that. Let's also look at an update for the inbox, though, because there is some tech there and there's a lot of bugs there. So we're going to bring the networking up to scratch. We're going to bring the 3D, the 2D, and the systems up to scratch on this. So we're going to need the 2D teams. We're going to need the 3D teams. We're going to need the uh, networking teams and the systems teams on that. So 10 teams are going to be working to bring the inbox up to date. We'll throw that in source control and get that going. I don't imagine it's going to take too long. The bugs might, but this is also version 1.2 of the inbox. So bringing this up to date, I imagine is going to be good for us. In other news, we've lost $35 million on the add-on for this, which is interesting because what that says to me is that the inbox has made 54 million minus 35 for the controller. So it's really not made as much money as we hoped it would. But I suppose the way to look at that is much like a lot of consoles. I don't know if this is necessarily true these days, but I know that back in the day, it was pretty common knowledge that things like the, the PlayStation or the Xbox, it was one of them didn't actually make money. The money came when you started selling games on those platforms. So hopefully we can start getting some money by putting games on those platforms but that's whatever uh we can't actually update the inbox controller which annoyingly has lost 35 million that's ridiculous <laughs> that is so ridiculous i i don't love that i'm gonna be honest i i do not love that but it's fine it's, it's totally fine. We're not super stressed. I am super stressed about it, but we're going to pretend, you know, publicly. We don't want the public to know that, that, that Nerdrosoft is freaking out about losing money on this controller. Also, I've just realized I set this up as our main reception, right? And it's a good looking space. I absolutely love how this space has turned out. I also totally forgot to uh, paint anything in, in that little hallway there. Interesting. Well, we'll leave it as is. I set this up as the main reception. It looks great, but I actually built this one down here and totally forgot about it, despite having looked at this building for what feels like forever. So let's go ahead, I guess, and create a new room group, which is going to be the uh, console 
I guess just building is what we'll do. And I'm going to add this uh, reception to the console building. So let's add those to that group. And I'm going to get some receptionists. Because I figure we can have... Oh my god, that's a lot of traffic. I feel, I feel like we can have, you know, two receptions, I guess. This one is nice, but this one is better. I feel like two receptions is a good idea. Let's let's go ahead and sort by type. Let's get down to my receptionists who are going to be down here somewhere. Where, oh my god, they're right at the bottom, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I want to go ahead and I want to hire. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four receptionists. I'm going to grab all of you. And you're going into the console building. And then you guys are going to be coming in at 1 uh, p.m. right there. And that gives us four receptionists at any one time throughout the entire company. We should now be able to get some deals. Not that we need them, but we do have a lot of hosting jobs. And it is helping to keep our reputation pretty good. So let's just go ahead and keep taking those. And I'm not going to bother with marketing or printing or support for anything else. You weren't a team leader, were you? No. Okay. We're fine. I've just realized that some of the deals that I took there put external hosting on the nerdersoft hosting server so let's go through here and just make sure that i change that a little bit so these are all mine but these guys here are absolutely not so we're going to move those to the contract hosting server and leave the nerdersoft one alone and all of my servers are doing fine which is great so we're just going to leave them be and then if we look at the updates down here we're actually very close to being able to push this inbox update out which is going to be great. It's hopefully going to keep everyone interested. It's going to bring people back to the console. And Enphone 3, almost done as well. Still making pretty good money. 28 million right there. Let's see. Let's accept all of these. That's fine. Fire inspectors here tomorrow. That's fine. Uh, why did my money just drop off so, so suddenly? Why did we just spend 10 million? That was on... Wait, that's this? No, why did we go from 9? What did we do? sales sales dropped off by 15 million dollars good lord okay i guess n phone did drop by about eight so that's gonna do it uh inbox controller seems to have stopped making money so let's just stop marketing that the studios are still making money which is fine this guy is well they're all still supported they all still have active users so we'll kind of leave those be and looking down here this is so close to being finished I'm hoping that if we push that out, it is, like I said, going to bring the sales back up a little bit. It's going to bring people back to the inbox. And hopefully a major update to Enphone 3, fixing nearly a thousand bugs, is going to, you know, bring people to that again and be like, oh man, they're really supporting this. They're fixing everything that's broken with it. So hopefully that's what happens. This inbox update is done, so we'll push that out. We're still marketing the thing as well. So 2 million... Is hopefully going to go to like three, four, maybe five million. We'll see what happens there. And in terms of deals, we have, well, we need to switch this over to contract hosting, but we can go ahead and take these guys here. And that will be, you know, my reputation staying up there quite nicely. And you guys are team leaders. No, that's fine. All right. So that's good. That's good. We're working on this end phone update. We'll get it out there next month. We're going to be pushing out Horse Simulator 5. We also have Captain Motorstab now actually properly slated for no uh, November 2017. So that's nice. And these guys are selling more shares. Ooh. Let me see. I nearly own 50% of this company. I have... I, I've seen the comments telling me to stop doing this, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying slowly buying up chunks of this company. It's kind of fun. Also, we just released Horse Sim 5. All right. Is it good? It better be. It, it had better be. It is. It's outstanding. Marketing is unavoidable. Let's go ahead and start printing it. We'll say, you know, whatever. And then hit a maximum of I 250,000, I guess. There's 150,000 in stock. We'll do 250,000 total. And that'll be great. Out, uh, sorry, unavoidable marketing is outstanding because it means that we should have a lot of people interested in this thing. And I guess those guys are probably going to go in and immediately start designing, yeah, Horse Simulator 6, which is aiming already for October 2017. That's kind of that's kind of great. They're managing to get Horse Simulator out every what, 3 years? That's pretty good. 
Oh man, the end phone really did drop off pretty hard there. Inbox did go up by about a million, which is great. This end phone update's also about to be done, and Horse Simulator 5 sadly only made 1.3 million in profit, did 2.5 million overall in the past month. So let's go ahead and see if we can port this thing to a bunch of operating systems. Uh, we'll do the usual, go for about 100,000 active users minimum. I know this one's 99, but it's close enough. Essentially, anything with a pretty good install base of active users is going to get this game. And hopefully, that's going to help us to uh, get more users and get more sales. We can also go ahead and start to... Well, we're already... Oh, we're already updating it. Okay. So, that's good. It's already being updated. That's, that's what we need to see. I don't believe I queued that up, but uh, fair enough. We'll kind of let them do it. That's that's fine. We'll get the port done. We'll get the update done. Everything's going to be fine. In terms of other things, I, I kind of hope we continue to make money. I mean, that's not good for January. With a new, with a new game out there, we made two hundred forty-five thousand dollars in January. That's, that's really bad. That is really bad. At least the end phone update's done, though, so hopefully that's going to keep people happy. We can also go ahead and just prioritize this update here, and hopefully that's going to let us manage to get more sales on Horse Simulator. So we'll see what happens. You weren't a team leader? No, we're fine. Okay. Oh, there we go. Sales went up a little bit by about $4.2 million. How did that happen is the question. It looks like Horse Sim went down and phone three did okay i'm not really too sure where all the sales might have come from but that is fine by me hopefully we can manage to get this uh horse sim port to all the other platforms done in a good amount of time i've actually gone ahead and assigned every single team that we have to that project just to try and rush it through because it is 12 port jobs so if we can get it onto everything, that would be kind of fantastic. I know that's going to slow down some of the other projects. And honestly, thinking about it, I should probably not have, like, marketing doing this because that seems like a dreadful idea. We probably also don't want support doing this because that also seems like a dreadful idea. But everybody else can absolutely focus on getting the new game onto new systems, including Anphone 3. We got to make sure it's on our systems. That's actually really important. It might help sales as well. So new game on our system brings up system sales, brings up game sales. It's a win-win. So here's the thing. Thus far, most of what we're doing is just sitting and looking at this building, talking about releases that are coming up, talking about the different ideas, automating things, dealing with retirements and firings and deaths and demands. What I want to do is I want to get back to what I mentioned I wanted to do, which is that I want to go in and start really maxing out all of the things that we're doing. So I want to start working on the Inbox 2, which is probably going to be called the Inbox 360 because I'm not original at all. But what I, what I want to do with this is I want to make something that is going to be completely next level, kind of like what we're doing with our operating system. So the first inbox had everything that I've ticked there and to make a new one. It's going to take about two years and that's great. But I think what we need to do since it's May of 2014 is we need to throw user accounts in there. We need to throw removable drives in there. We need to throw wireless communication, standardized input. We need to throw everything absolutely everything at this we're gonna overload that wasted interest and we're gonna see what happens we're gonna throw surround sound we're gonna throw speech recognition we're gonna throw search widgets notifications and themes we're gonna throw custom themes in there we're gonna make this thing ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and in terms of manufacturing it's gonna need well i believe it's gonna take a lot of things we need antenna which we aren't doing now. We need device input. We need drive base. So it's not that ridiculous, but it's it's a little ridiculous. We're going we're going all in. We're not going to do microphone surveillance because obviously kind of a bad idea to uh, to do that one. But we're going to do everything else. And in terms of price, it's 293. That's actually remarkably cheap, but I guess it's whatever. Let's let's take a risk and go for 350. Let's 
Let's try it. Physical stores are taking uh, $105 out of that. It's whatever. Uh, name is just going to be... You know, we, we are going to go with Inbox 360 just because I like it. That's fine. And in terms of the design, I mean, I believe that's the original Inbox, right? So let's let's sort of take some notes from, uh, from what we're taking inspiration from. And we'll go for sort of a white right there. We can maybe change the style up a little bit for, uh, let's see, maybe, well, maybe we jump ahead a little bit. Maybe, I don't like the big fan on the side of it, so we're going to sort of probably skip over that. Uh, this one is big fan on the side as well. Let's go for this. I like this. And is that just the middle part? Oh, that's the, the middle and the sides. Do we want to go for a completely white console? I feel like we sort of could. We could, uh, we could make it completely sort of symmetrical if we wanted to. We'll make it a little thinner, I think. That seems like a good idea. We could taper the bottom, which I don't necessarily want to do. But I think I am going to bend the sides because, well, we know, we know what this is taking inspiration from. That looks a little, it looks a little silly. It does, it does look a little, a little bit silly. Um, what about an old console? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, that's... Wow. You can uh you can really go all in with it, huh? Uh all right, what about that? That's that's actually kind of cool looking if we just make it it's so basically this is going to be a much bigger console than the first one. But I don't I don't mind that too much. I might get rid of the skew cuz I don't know that I love it, but maybe add a little bit of roundness to it. Maybe I don't know which one of these is going to get rid of the skew that I'm looking at here. There we go. That's the skew. What if we did that? Right? What if we did something like that and we bend the inside a little bit so it's rounded, it has that bend to it. I like that. That's that's pretty good. So that's fine. Source control for this guy is going to be source control. Hosting is going to be Nerdsoft hosting. Inbox 360, $350. We'll do a new framework because we'll do a new framework unless we want to use this one, which is whatever, I guess. Uh, we can bring those tech levels up. I don't know if the old framework is going to benefit us in any way at all, but that's fine. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, basically put this on project management. I don't think I'm going to do that because I don't want them to make the inbox 362. So I'll I'll handle this. Uh, inbox controller 2. Oh boy, I have to design this thing. Let's just do the inbox uh, 360 controller because obviously, and it's going to have just everything. It's it's just going to have everything. It's, it's that simple. Uh, apparently, it doesn't have security. Customization is fine. Whatever. Um, <laughs> that's 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 fine. It looks to be mostly hardware doing this thing. So let's uh, let's see if we can get the hardware guys to work on this thing. We'll go for none, and we'll go for uh, for hardware here, and that should be all right. That that should be fine. We can throw more LED at it, I guess. We can throw a nice big battery pack in there. Source control, source control. And what is this going to look like? Well, that's the old one, isn't it? That's that's not bad. So this one's gonna be uh this one's gonna be white, much like the uh the rest of the thing. The buttons can be let's go for like a gray. I think gray is pretty good. It's looking like a pretty good controller. And we can probably you know make it a little thinner. We can maybe you know keep it a similar size, skew it out a little bit, bring the handles just uh, down a little bit. Uh, let's make that a little wider. Let's see what else we can do to it. There we go. I think that's a pretty good looking controller. It does the job. It's got some new thumbsticks. It's got a new D-pad. The buttons have changed slightly, so that's pretty good for the Inbox 360 controller. We can go ahead and basically throw that into development. As for the Inbox 360 itself, we can auto balance a little bit, I suppose. We can go to the next page. And this thing is going to need a lot of people working on it. So we're obviously going to need some systems. We are going to need some uh, some hardware on this. We are going to need some 2D on this. We're going to need some 3D on this. We need the audio teams working on this. And we need the networking teams working on this. So that gives us 12 teams working on this thing. Shouldn't be anyone there doing anything that don't need to be doing anything, which is good. And then for development, it's going to be exactly the same set of teams. So not the updates, but we need 3D already. We've got 2D right there. We've got audio. We've got hardware. 
we have network and we have systems and that should give us 12 teams okay in terms of a lead designer for this thing i've got to be honest it's really tempting to make it me but i think i'm already leading something so i'm not 100 percent sure on this let me just double check am i leading anything here no no horse simulator no vector team no vertex no and amplitude no now the estimated creativity score is 75 percent on this if it's me whereas if we go with someone like let's say lisa arnold it's anywhere from 59 percent to 100 percent so i mean it could be worse but it could be considerably better than what i would do but I think, I think I'm going to take lead on this. I have a port, you know, I did the original inbox. It was inspiring. So I'll take it. I'm, I'm going to take the sequel. Maybe, maybe the threequel, someone else can do that, but I'm taking the sequel. We're not getting it published. We are going to just develop it and everything's going to be fine. So there we go. We're working on the inbox 360. We're working on the inbox 360 controller. The controller will probably take no time at all, but we're going to have to upgrade all of our assembly lines to get that going but that wasn't the only thing i wanted to work on i mentioned how we're sitting here looking at the screen and we're not really making anything other than the stuff that's been scheduled through project management well there's a little piece of software that we forgot about there's a little piece of, a little piece of software that went into the public domain you know what i'm talking about i want to bring back bug blocker it's been too long and we need to make it bigger and better than it ever was before and basically what I want to do with this is I want to create Defender. We're not going to call it Bug Blocker because that IP is now in the public domain. We don't own it anymore. So we're going to create Defender. It is going to have every feature except for data mining because that would be a terrible idea. We're going to use a new framework, Defender Core. And essentially, we're going to try and use our own things, which are going to be slightly tricky here. Uh, so looking at it, we need to bring Vector Studio up to date. So before we even do this, let's minimize that design document and let's go and update Vector Studio a little bit. So let's see here. We want to bring systems up to 2010, 2D up to 2011. And we're just going to, you know, we'll give it to the updates team. That's, that's probably fair enough. I think they can manage this. So throw those in there. There's no bugs to fix and that's fine. Let's make that a priority 10, please. And in doing this, we should then be able to use Vector Studio in Defender without having to pay for licensing fees, essentially. That's that's kind of why we're doing what we're doing. Now, these guys have started selling more shares, which is exciting because I currently own 49% of the company. And now I own 50.8% of the company. So I could take these guys over for $40 million. And I don't know if you necessarily remember why I first started investing in this company, but it's because... Actually, I don't remember why I first started investing in this company. I'm going to be honest. They make office software. <laughs> I've completely forgotten. There might have been a reason once upon a time, but I certainly don't remember it. Oh my God. A bunch of people just retired. Uh, none of you were team leaders though. So that's fine. Okay. That's, that's fine. I don't remember why I first started taking over this company or buying shares in this company. I know that there are other companies I'm interested in though. Like, there's one down here that's doing something called, like, the iBox. Yeah, there's a console. Wait, that's us. That's the inbox. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, there is one somewhere. Yeah, the iBox 3. It's a console operating system, right? And then we're doing the inbox console operating system. So this is Bad Score Studio. I think theirs is more successful than mine as well, which is interesting. Do they want $16 million and I could buy that IP? How much to just buy the company? <laughs> That's, that's kind of my question. How much how much to just buy the company? So the owner is these guys. They're not worth too much. Their charts are okay. Their details are here. All right. Okay. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. I, <laughs> I'm going to do something silly. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just buy a nice big chunk of this company. And I'm wondering, can I buy enough of it to just take it over? And the answer is unfortunately no. But I can buy what I think was maybe a hundred million in stocks. And well, that's probably fine. That's that's all right. I'll buy them eventually. That's what we'll do. We'll go into these guys as well, because they did InterOS back in the day, right? 
and Int OS was remarkably popular. They did a computer operating system, and it was it was huge. I imagine they're probably working on a sequel to that, which is going to be competition with our major operating system. But they also did the iBox, and I kind of need to buy that IP. That's that's kind of where I'm at. So we'll see what happens. Well, 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 we need to we need to get the IP, but I also kind of want the company. I could just buy it. 16 million is a lot cheaper than 100 million for you know the sh the the shares, but. I like to do things in a way that lets me throw my money around. All right, that's that's how I'm looking at it. We have the ability to spend a hundred million to buy these these shares, right? For example, <laughs> they have absolutely ruined themselves. Now there you go. I now own half of that company. All right, I own half of the company. Two hundred and thirty, two hundred eighty-three million dollars, and I could take them over. If I go and look at these guys, I can buy a percent, 43 million, I could take those guys over. For less than $350 million, I could take both of these companies. But here's the thing. Here's here's the, the, the tricky part with that. If I take them over, they become subsidiaries. And if they become subsidiaries, I have to sort of... Oh god, they managed to steal things. Alright, let's replace all of that. If they become subsidiaries, then I have to try and support those companies. Whereas if I just simply happen to have stocks in the companies, a considerable number of stocks, then there may come a point where the company goes out of business and I potentially inherit the intellectual property. Or if the company does really well, maybe I get to, maybe I get to sell my stocks. That's that's kind of how I'm looking at it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. What I'm hoping for right now, more than anything, is this Vector Studio update to go out so we can start working on Defender. You weren't a team leader, were you? No. I feel like that's my main question right now. This person wasn't a team leader. Oh, no. Oh, man. These guys, these guys are just selling so much of their account. 22 million, sure. I own 57% of that company now. I, I'm kind of enjoying just throwing money around. We might be about to lose our status as a billion dollar company, but I'll be honest with you. I uh, will we'll get it back so it'll be it'll be fine it's it's totally okay I'm sure I'm sure it's totally okay now can we finish this update please and just like that it's done vector studio is now 2011 on tech level so let's go ahead and use that as for operating systems I'm actually just going to search this way by active users and we're going to go down to about there so all of those systems are going to have this uh we'll go ahead and say you know all of those 8 million active users is pretty good uh, auto balance is whatever, and this is going to need a few teams. So let's go for uh, systems, let's go for 2D, and let's go for network, and that should be fine. And then for development, it's going to be exactly the same 2D network systems right about there. That should keep us good. And the lead designer on this, we have Wilburn Wiley who can have anywhere from 64 to 90 percent creativity but is a very good lead designer with antivirus so we're probably gonna go for uh wilburn there and that should be all right we could if we wanted to project manage this but i think just for now i'm gonna develop it normally and i'll sort of project manage it myself and that should be all right i don't imagine it's gonna take that long though I mean, it is it is a pretty advanced piece of software, but it is also just an antivirus software. Those are typically very, very quick to develop in Software Inc. So we'll see what happens. It might be the OS support that really cripples us, but we'll see. Oh, this is ridiculous. The Inbox 360 controller is going to be done in no time at all. And also a bunch of people just retired all from the 3D team. They were with us for 25 years. Wow. It's been 25 years since we started working on a on a 3D team. That's 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 actually kind of nuts. That is that is kind of crazy. Okay, that's exciting though. Also, we're updating the Enphone 3 and uh, Inbox again just to try and bring the tech levels up a little bit. See if we can get some sales back on those. Because as it stands right now, we are uh, we are making money. We're making a little bit, a couple of million, which isn't too bad. It'd be nice to be making a bit more though. I've just, you know, I've got to be honest. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to be making a little bit more here. Also, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, these guys. Wow, down 55%. That's that's kind of rough. That's that's kind of rough. I don't think we're going to be selling anything 
I don't think we're going to be selling those stocks anytime soon. But that's all right. We'll manage. We will absolutely manage. Uh, I'm also realizing I can go in and set up this new assembly line for the controllers. Now, this is currently the entire controller assembly line as far as I'm aware. Let's take a look and see what this new one is going to need. Because I don't think it's... Oh, it is a lot. It is a lot of things. It's a lot of stuff has to go under the motherboard as well. So, this is the motherboard assembly right there. So, let's take a little bit of a look. Let's uh, close this part, go into build mode. And let's make this a little bit smaller so I can kind of see what's going on in the background. All we need to see is this part. We'll put it in the top right. And let's see what's going on. So, speakers, right? One speaker printer, one battery pack printer. And that needs to go into the motherboard. So here's what I think we do. I think we duplicate this, this guy and put it there and there. And there. And there. And what we can do is grab those two and say that they are going to output. And this is going to be for joysticks. What are we doing? Small battery packs? I'm pretty sure we went with larger battery packs, but whatever. Uh, we'll go for speakers on those. So that's now going into the motherboard. And then, oh, that means we're going to have to stop. Ooh. Oh, this might be a problem, but we'll see what happens. Uh, then these two in the middle need to be small battery packs. And now that's all going into that motherboard. That should be fine. The only thing we need to change on the case, which is this assembly over here, which might need to be changed a little bit more because of how I've got this laid out. But the only thing we should need to change there is I guess adding the one LED printer but that is going to be kind of tricky because of the way I've got this whole layout done here so I think what we'll do instead is we're going to grab this entire production section for the case we're going to move it over to here and that's going to push it all onto that conveyor belt which is probably going to overload it a little bit I don't, I don't love that, but it's just how it's going to have to be. And that all goes into the case. Okay. So really, we do just need one more printer. So if I just go and duplicate you and put you there, and I right-click and I say you're going to be outputting, uh, let's see, LED, that should now be everything. And I believe it is everything. So that's that's fine. So that's that's our updated controller assembly line. So if I go to this thing and I go to manufacturing and I say I want you on the inbox controller line, that is fine, I think. So we should still be able to assemble this, right? So that's going to be set output. It's final assembly. Yeah. So that should be fine. All right. Let's um let's let's pause. Let's go to print and let's just say however many we'll do um We'll take a chance. We'll do 250,000. It's going to be a lot, but it should be okay. And I think what I might even do is I I would like to try and swing this around so we can send these up to the helipad, but I don't think I'm going to get that choice. I think they're all going to have to go down here, which kind of sucks, but I think that's just going to be the way of it. I think that's just what we're going to have to deal with. So... Let's go ahead and allow that. We should see some parts start getting produced. We absolutely do. We are going to see some various components come through, but we should eventually start seeing controllers coming out of these final assembly parts. So, yeah, there we go. We have some products coming down. We should have them coming through here as people are walking through. It looks absolutely fantastic. And that's going to be the controller. So that's fine. We're not going to bother promoting it. We're just going to have them in stock, and that's just how it is. Let's go ahead and finish the inbox update there, and hopefully we can finish the end phone update as well. It shouldn't take that long. There we go. All right. Now, hopefully both of those things are going to get a bunch more sales. And it turns out the end phone did. It went up by about 4 million, which is not too bad. You guys are determined to sell your company. I'm just going to keep buttoning. I'm just going to keep just gonna keep buying little chunks of it i don't know why i can't speak today man i have not i have not had my coffee yet it's really 
it's 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 wearing me down i gotta get myself a coffee now before we start wrapping up for the day here's a little something that i'm thinking we should do captain murder stab 5 is not due out for another three years so there's gonna be a pretty big gap between four and five four came out in let's see here captain murder stab 4 was march of 2011 it's going to be over six years between four and five. Now, we created an expansion for Captain Motor Stab 4. We created Stabby Face Begins, the origin story for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for Sergeant Stabby Face, right? It's, it's, it's the expansion. We're not making Sergeant Stabby Face games. We are creating sort of not even standalone expansions. We're creating side stories in the world of captain murder stab in the murder stab universe if you will the murder stab cinematic universe if you will the mcu basically um <laughs> anyway uh my, my point being i feel like we should probably update captain murder stab and put out another expansion for it so let's do that that seems like a good idea so let's sort by release date Horse Simulator 5 could probably do with an expansion as well, but I feel like Captain Murder Stab, especially given that 2 and 3 are the most successful pieces of software we've ever put out, and, you know, 4 is, is getting up there. It's the sixth most popular. I feel like what we need to do is we need to go and we need to update it. So we want to bring audio up to date. We want to bring 3D up to date. The 2D stuff's coming up to date and systems are coming up to date. Now, unfortunately, that would require some licensing. So we're actually going to have to go in and we're going to have to update Vector Studio to, uh, ooh, I wonder if we, wait, no, Vector Studio is fine. It's, it's Vertex Studio that we want to bring up to date. So systems and 3D, and that's fine. Amplitude is going to be the same story. We want to bring the systems up to date. We want to bring the 2D up to date and the audio up to date. Unfortunately, I can use Vector Studio for this because we already updated it. And once we get those updates done, we can then use those to update Captain Motor Stab. Oh, of course, this would start getting weird. I can't even update my game without something getting weird over here. All right, here's what we need to do. We need to look at this controller. We need to look at this again. We need to minimize this and we need to go back into build mode because I need to get this thing right. So here here is my thinking i want to go in i want to grab all of these delete them i'm going to grab all of those i'm going to delete them i'm going to grab this i'm going to delete them i'm going to grab all the lights as well and i'm going to delete them let's get some brightness in here so i can see what's going on and we're going to start from scratch with a nice big assembly line so we need one speaker well, one printer, we need that's a one, five, six, going into two motherboard assemblers. So if we go in here, what we can do is go to component printer and we can say, well, we could arguably put one right in there. We could put one back here as well if we wanted to, which I don't think would be a terrible idea. Sort of just using as much of the space as possible. So there's, there's the speaker. And then we'll go ahead and say that is going to be two controllers. Uh, that is going to be two more controllers and that is going to be a small battery pack. So all of these guys need to basically merge onto a single conveyor belt. So I'm going to bring these all out like this and like this and like this. We could sort of have this come over. We could have this guy, I guess. Well, we'll raise this guy up. So if we ever need into that corner, we can get into it. But basically there and there. And that currently gives us, well, I guess that gives us uh, a decent little bit of space to play with. So we'll have you go there. We'll go a little bit further with all of these guys. We could raise all of them up if we wanted to, which actually is exactly what I'm going to do, just because it's going to look a little better. I know that doesn't matter, but it's, it's going to look better. So it's what I'm going to do. We'll raise all of these guys up like so. And now these guys need to go into assemblers. So at this point, we need to merge all of this. So what we can do is we can say that these next two assemblers are going to be here and here. So we're going to have, 
I guess. Ooh, hold on a minute. No, they need to be a little bit further forward. So we're going to move them to there. In fact, I'm going to go one further. I'm going to move to there. And I'm going to move to there. And then we can place a splitter right about there. And we can go ahead and do something like this. So all of those conveyor belts feed into that splitter, which will evenly split these components between the two assemblers. All right. And then that goes into final assembly. So this is fine. This guy down here is our speaker. These guys right here. Oh, I forgot the gyroscopes. I totally forgot the gyroscopes. That's kind of a problem, but we can fix that. Uh, these guys right here are going to be the controllers. We're going to need two more component printers. So one, two, and uh, we'll do pretty much exactly the same thing. We'll duplicate these guys for there and there. Bring this straight across. Uh, this guy is going to be our small battery pack. And these guys are going to be the, what are we looking for? Gyroscopes. So those all feed into these guys right here, which is going to be our motherboard. And then that's going to feed into final assembly. So that's, that's that setup, right? Next, we need plastic, a rumble unit, and LEDs. So the way I'm looking at doing this is going to be something relatively similar. It has to go into a case assembly. But what we can do is we can go and say one, two, three. Because we only need one of each, right? So we go to you and we say that is going to be uh, plastic. This one is going to be the rumble unit. And this one is going to be the LED. And we'll go ahead and we'll extend. In fact, you know what we'll do? We'll grab this right now so grab all four of those and we'll go one two three four five and that's fine so that that works out these guys will get extended along and that's okay but these guys have to essentially merge together into another two assemblers so what we'll do is let's see we'll go something like this right here so this guy's gonna go in you're gonna go to there you're gonna go to there straight in there straight in there and wait, no, that's not how that works. Hold on a minute. Uh, let's do this and this. Turn you to the right. Turn you to the left. You guys all go slightly differently. So that goes away. These guys go that way and that way. And we do two more component assemblers, which are going to be set up for the case. So that's the case right there. These guys all feed into the, the case, and that's okay. And now we need to go into final assembly, which is going to be two assemblers. So long story short, what we're probably going to want to do is grab these guys and move them to, I want to say there. We can go ahead and we can do this and this. We can extend the elevated sections of conveyor belt. And then essentially this is all going to merge onto one conveyor belt. It's going to go into two assemblers and it's going to go down the chute. So long story short, we need a component assembler. We are going to go and we're going to do... I'm very tempted to just place them right here. But what I'll do is I'll place one there and one there. And we'll sort of, you know, feed them that way. So long story short, this conveyor belt goes here. And it goes into a splitter, which is going to go like that. All right. So that should give us a means to have all of these guys sort of feed together, right? And I think I could probably even go so far as pulling just all of this out and keeping things as elevated as I can possibly keep them. So grab these. We can move them to right about there. Delete you and delete you. We'll copy you and we'll get all this sorted. This will hopefully solve all of our problems and there we go this entire thing has been set up it takes up that entire floor now but that is hopefully going to be the optimal setup for the thing let me grab all of these conveyor belts let me go for the blue ones you know what i want to go for something a bit unique on this i'm going to go for sort of gray-ish conveyor belts and then the secondary can be sort of the grayish as well and this can be maybe we do that for the conveyor belts Looks a little interesting. Looks a bit different. We'll grab the component assemblers. We'll paint those things as well. So they're going to be a little bit, a little bit lighter. Wait, have I done something wrong? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. 
what have I done? So those are, yeah, those are component assemblers, component assemblers, component assemblers. That's actually fine. Yeah, that's what we wanted. So we want to grab the assemblers. We want to go for sort of this, this white color. Secondary is going to be the same. And tertiary is, let's go for a bit of a, uh, that right there looks fine. So that's okay. Uh, we'll also save that style just to be different. And then for the component printers, we'll sort of go primary white, secondary also white. Tertiary, sort of the, I guess, darker color there. And that's all right. And then for the print, the uh, splitters, we'll just do something kind of similar. We'll go for sort of the white. We'll go for the white. And we'll go for something a little bit darker right there. A little bit of a boring room. Not a lot of color, but it is a printing room, so there probably shouldn't be. Now, if I've done this correctly, we should see this thing actually running the way it's supposed to be running. We should see no components feeding through into the recycler because everything is now balanced exactly the way the game tells me to. So it looks like that's working. And honestly, this looks really cool. Just having this massive just set of, of everything coming together. It's very, very cool looking. Hopefully it continues to work. It doesn't look like anything's coming out of here that shouldn't be. So we'll keep an eye on it. I definitely think that's a better looking production line than what we had before. So that's nice. And uh, let's look down here. I think those updates, I think I did get them done. So... What was I, what was there? I was doing? I was going to update something. I was going to update Captain Motorstab, wasn't I? So let's update this guy. We'll bring the audio up to date. We'll bring the 3D up to date. We'll bring the 2D up to date. And bring the, uh, the systems up as well. So now I can use Amplitude, which gives us the latest tech level. Now we can use Vertex for the latest tech level there. And we can use Vector for the latest tech level there. And that's going to be absolutely beautiful. We're not going to fix any bugs. We're just going to let the updates team deal with it. We might work on another expansion at some point. Oh, there are some components getting through there. That's a little bit worrying. Okay. We might need more assemblers. The effectiveness on these guys is not very good. So we might, might, might need more assemblers, which might mean moving final assembly on this guy down here, which I wouldn't be against doing, to be completely honest. Let's, let's have a very quick look and see if that's something I could do. Uh, so if we go component assembler, let's say we need three of these guys. We could put one, say, there. We can do another one there. That is, well, it's not going to be accessible. One there. And I guess another one there. So if we did that, and I wanted some conveyor belts to deal with this. Can I do this? Is, is that a thing that's going to let me do? I think it is. Sort of move you to there. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. And then you guys would sort of go that way. Okay. Might need a recycler. So recycler would kind of go there. And that should be all right. So yeah, in theory, I can just do this. I don't need to elevate all of this right here. So this would just come down. And I guess we'll bring it sort of back. Bring it over like this and like that. And then I can throw a splitter right about there. Oh, that's not accessible, though. That is going to be a problem. Okay. So here's what we can do. We can take those out. We can elevate this guy. It goes down there. And in theory... Are you accessible? No, still can't reach it. Damn. Okay. Uh, it does slightly complicate things. I wonder if I was to move this back. Move you back. Put you there. Put you there. Is it accessible? It's a dead end currently, but that doesn't say it's not accessible. If I put a conveyor belt there and a conveyor belt there, this one is not accessible now. Uh, okay. All right. I have an idea. So now the final assembly isn't done upstairs. It's done down here instead. And we just have a bunch of splitters that are hopefully going to do good things. The effectiveness is not amazing on these. It's really not amazing on these at all, but uh, I mean, it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why we're necessarily sending components through. I think we just probably have too much of one thing and not enough of another. Might be too much of, yeah, it's probably not enough, probably not enough motherboards, I guess. Yeah, effectiveness on these guys is terrible. So that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of a problem. We're putting too many gyros through, too many, yeah. All right. I can kind of see what's going on here. I think we need more motherboard assembly is is what we need but that's doable i guess we, we can probably do that 
So with a little bit of a change to how things are up here, we've managed to make things a little more efficient. I've just sort of staggered the way all the lines come together. And I know it looks a bit weird, but it actually does sort of work. So that's fine by me. I'm not too worried about it looking a little bit weird if we get the results that we're looking for. And I just like how this entire space looks, if I'm completely honest with you. I think it looks pretty neat. I think I am going to just sort of change these guys a little bit though. So we're going to do this, this, and we're going to duplicate you to there so that that all connects together really nicely. This down here is just going to be a perpetual nightmare because it is. That's just how it's going to exist. And we're also going to update Captain Motor Stamp. There we go. Beautiful. So long story short, we've managed to start pushing out the Inbox 360 controllers which is kind of exciting. It's it's definitely kind of exciting. You know, it's it, it bodes well for the future, even if the Inbox 360 is still going to take years to develop. We at least have the controller, so that's something. And so, with all of that craziness out of the way, with the upgraded assembly line for the controllers and a job ahead of us that's going to be a lot of fun, upgrading the console assembly line, I think we're going to leave it there, at least for today. There's still a lot of work to be done. I'm still very excited about all these releases that we have coming up, but it's going to have to wait until next time. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure, as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Buh bye bye